humans of the cardboard welcome back to just nuts guys today we're taking a look at code talkers finally again one of my favorite decks for sure finally we can build the control variant because of our boy deco talker heat so this card pretty much is the centerpiece of this deck it's the most important card in this deck without him this variant does not exist most code talker builds end up being super combo oriented i'm gonna take a look at that build in a little bit here um but as for today you know we got heat soul so let's focus on the super heat soul oriented deck so without further ado let's jump into this thing um let's get it going so obviously the basics of this deck are you want to make heat soul and you just want to draw a ton of cards this deck has a ton of free open slots which is a really nice bonus so that you can play whatever the best utility cards against the meta are whether they're hand traps whether they're traps whether they're you know just going second cards whatever you want um you'll see what we have going on here but obviously depending on the format you can just adjust those slots for whatever you think is best uh for the given meta game so let's jump into this thing starting off with our starter cards i would call lady debug our most important starter it's a one card heat soul gadget also a one card heat soul but he doesn't help us get anything else in rotation whereas debug can get us access to stuff like micro coder i'd probably say these are the main starters of the deck if you're not as far as the monsters go but micro coder also able to be an extender for you to help you get up into heat soul through interruption which can be very important and uh yeah all in all like this is sweet debug's awesome searching you multiple extenders in the deck uh gadget awesome because he's a one card heat soul but also on the follow-up he can be so so huge being able to reborn something and just get extra material push into an access code talker super easily very strong and the micro coder searching you assign that speller trap is just you know amazing <laughs> All right, then for the extenders, we've got ourselves Code Generator. We've got a Code Exporter, another new card, Dotscaper, and our Cybers Converter. Um, I was also looking at Lady Debug, or not Lady Debug, um, what's her name? Uh, Backup Secretary, but Cybers Converter is just better. One, it's a level two or lower, so your gadget can actually revive it where it can't do a Secretary because she's a level three. And... Um, also, uh, if you want to take advantage of something like Talkback Lancer, I'm not in this build, but if you wanted to mess around with him, uh, he takes level two or lower Cybers Monsters, so this card would obviously work for that. But these are all great. Generator, insane. Um, I also like Generator, and the reason I ended up cutting down Gadget from three to two, I had it at three before, is that you have so many cards that can work as normal summons. Dotscaper is a one-card Heat Soul. Debug and Gadget, one-card Heat Souls. You can normal summon Coder or Generator, and as long as you have any other way to put another monster on the field, like you're able to still get to Heat Soul and then summon Generator. Code Exporter is not super searchable in the deck because it's level 5, but if you end up summoning Generator and linking it off for a Code Talker from the field, you can use this effect to just search Exporter. And then this lets you link up while also getting a free add back for follow-up or extra extension. So this card is really sweet. I like it. Um, I'm just messing around with it because it's new. I'll see. If, it, if I don't love it, I can take it out, obviously, super easily. But um, for now, it seems pretty good. It's just a fine extender to draw. That It's an extender plus a follow-up, which is great. All right, and that's it for the cyber stuff in the main deck. We're moving on to our uh, our utility cards for the monsters. Just a bunch of hand traps, right? Triple Ash, Triple Veiler, Double Bell. This should probably be Triple Bell. I think for the format, Bell's pretty strong. Um, I just don't have a third Bell for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I'm a weirdo. Uh, double Crow, and the final card I have here is Double Droll. This was Lancia before, but this was Lancia... Uh, couple months ago when I was kind of theorizing the deck but the format has changed Lancey is obviously not great versus Despia it's good versus Flunder but like it just feels like every other card it's it's okay versus Sword Soul um but it feels like every other deck is it's just meh against in the format so Droll feels a little more high impact I wanted one really strong hand trap and uh Nibiru kind of Nibiru's okay Lancey is okay uh but Droll felt a little more uh, like universally working versus most of the decks in the game right now. So I'll take it. Um, but yeah, all in all, pretty good. Um, I like having the uh, double bell and the double crow to handle DPE. Card's definitely annoying for a control deck like this. That's the exact kind of card that you don't want to not be able to handle. So those cards are super sweet for that. Moving into the spell lineup for the Cyanet stuff, we have double, triple Cyanet Mining and one copy of Cyanet Crosswipe. I know some people don't love 
sign up mining at three. They like playing it at two because it's searchable off of microcoder. But the argument against is like, oh, I don't want to draw two ever. Like, what do you mean? The this card discards for cost. So you just discard the second copy if you draw two. And in that regard, we've got one card play. So I'll give up two cards to get to a one card heat soul. Um, and then it, uh, there's other things like getting to your best extenders, like microcoder, just a plus one. Like most, most of these extenders are just raw plus ones. And you're going to make heat soul anyway to draw to make up for the advantage you ever lose off of this. So I wanted consistency first. And then we could worry about advantage um, once we get to heat soul. But there's that and then cross wipe. It's actually a really cool utility card. This card is a quick effect to tribute any uh, cybers monster on the field to target a card and destroy it. Really good. Uh, it's another out to Mystic Mind, but it's also searchable. Um, there were a couple situations where when you're playing conflict as well, if you hard draw the conflict, you're like, wow, I have a search off microcoder. Like, do I want sign in mining, which is fine. Or I could actually add another interruption to my board. Uh, with cross wipe or if you're in a grind and you use cross wipe early or not cross wipe, if you use a conflict early and then you want to resolve microcoder again on a later turn you may not have like a legit great search target that has removal or even disruption unless you play like a second conflict or in this case i'm rolling with cross wipe it's a cool utility card i'm messing around with it again we'll see how it goes and um you know i'll keep an eye on it potential drop potentially droppable if you want to replace it with something else but i like it um, speaking of backward removal, I do want to have double cosmic cyclone in the deck. This actually just feels really good. This card's in almost everybody's side deck right now. And if you're not playing this, it's, it's like tin, twin twisters. So I like having something in the main deck for this. Um, it feels like a lot of decks right now. Um, the way they play is like setting spells and traps, Despia setting spells and traps to fuse. Um, obviously the brave engine. Um, getting to Fateful Adventure, this card's awesome. Stuff like Invokes is getting a little more popular with Despia stuff, so being able to like hit meltdowns and stuff, chain two schisms and whatnot, like this card is pretty nice for. It's just a really good utility card. It feels like it has a pretty decent interaction in like any matchup in the moment, for the moment. Um, and then Extender, One Monster Reborn. This is a Cyber stack. This deck just wants Cyber bodies on the field to keep linking up, so you can play through Interruption or potentially just get to uh, you know, a bigger board by playing Monster Reborn. Um, so I love this card, definitely a strong card. Also another response to DPE. I really wanna stress that in, uh, a bunch. Then for some one-off uh, utility cards, you play one Triple Tactics Talents, one Mind Control, one Called by the Grave. I'll say this, I think the Mind Control could easily be a second Talents, but I really like Mind Control uh, in this deck. It's a card that if you draw, like you're just plussing anyway. So you just hold this card in the hand and you just know it's going to allow you to like beat interruptions on the next turn. It's just really strong because uh, not uh, you, you have multiple monsters in your extra deck that just take any effect monster. So steal an opponent's monster, use it as fuel to link climb. I, I love it. That's awesome. So like stealing DPE and then being able to link off with it or at least force it out so you can potentially set up a, you know, a Sinet conflict or something so that you can beat the DPE when it comes back or something is really nice. Called, again, another response to DPE. And Talek's just insane. And with uh, people playing a, a decent amount of hand traps right now, if we get hand trapped and then just draw two or if we're beating the hand trap anyway, now we get to rip a card out of the opponent's hand and get knowledge on what they're playing. Uh, slash what's going on in their hand is just so strong. So this could easily be double, triple tactics towns, but mind control is really cool. I would definitely side the mind control if you're not uh, maining it though. Definitely a really strong going second card to bait things for sure. Like I, I look at stuff like Sword Soul. Like you could literally um, fire it on the uh, uh, the Chi Zhao, they either have to Barone de Fleur it, or if, if they can't, or yet another way to bait the Barone de Fleur, you take the, the Chi Zhao, be, so now he he, they, he had nothing to negate if you use it without a monster on the field. So they just lose the cheese out, and it turns off their um, their blackout as well. So strong. Um, for traps, one conflict. You just need the one. This card's insane. It negates any card and banishes it. Then they can't activate a card with that name until the end of the next turn. So strong. Card's insane. Uh, and then finishing up here for the traps, double rivalry and double solemn strike. I, I honestly wasn't sure. I don't know if I love strike in this list because, like, if we're drawing strike on the opponent's turn, that just might be a little bit too slow. Whereas, you know, if we're in a grind game anyway, like, setting rivalry slowly can just, like, help us, like, completely neutralize the board state. Like, you want to simplify the board state and just draw a ton of cards. And this card is so perfect at that. Felt like three was a little bit overkill, uh, especially because there are certain matchups that won't care about this, like Flunders. But, um... 
you know, for most of the decks in the metagame right now, this card's, like, really, really scary for them. Um, but, yeah. And then Strike's good. I mean, going first Strike's really good. It helps a lot of your stuff just resolve, beat. Uh, and that's, like, a lot of times that's going to be, like, the one interruption added to your board that's going to, like, make it your board unbreakable. Whereas it otherwise might have been. So that's it for the main. 40 cards there. And as you can see, like, literally skimming through these. Let's just skim through these real quick. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 uh technically 13 14 15 i think that's mandatory 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 literally 22 free slots to play whatever you want you could even look at like uh, a cybers eldritch build but play it more heat soul oriented instead of dpe oriented like people are playing right so just some ideas there you have 22 free slots to play whatever you want with that uh package and um yeah so there you go Getting into the extra deck, uh, Link 1s, 1 Link Garibo, 1 Link Disciple, 1 Salamangrate Alamirage. Um, I'll tell you right now, this should be double Link Garibo, but I only have one. I think when I bought it originally, I wasn't expecting to ever play more than one of it in a deck. But in a deck like this, where most of the time you just need a card that you can turn any level 4 lower Cybers into, like get it into Grave for stuff like Cybers Gadget, that makes him a 1 card Heat Soul. Um... Yeah, and then why not have a card like this where in certain matchups like Eldlich, this card's insane. So if you don't know, this card's just a trap negate. Uh, if your opponent activates a trap card while it's on the field, it contribute itself to negate and banish the trap. So against Eldlich specifically, this card is insane. Um, and it helps you play into stuff like Sword Soul. Like this helps you beat Blackout. You make this early enough and you have enough extenders. You're just going to bait the Blackout or you're going to be able to beat Blackout with this. And as long as you can get through the other interruptions, you're good to go. Um... Which, like, if you saw a hand trap, your opponent might have only ended on Chi Zhao plus Blackout. So, like, if you make this early and you're able to keep playing, you just literally need to worry about beating the Chi Zhao. And then maybe if they have hand traps. Uh, and then Link's Disciple, like, you should just be a second Link Rebo because this card's not going to come up as much. Uh, one Almirage. Uh, this is for specific hands when you draw a hand trap and you need to link it off. Uh, for, like, maybe you draw hand trap plus microcoder, hand trap plus exporter or generator this is actually really important to be able to play through it so if you look at the hand traps your ashes your veilers your bells your crow and your droll all 12 of them are normal summonable that can go into almirage to at least make a cyburst so that you can extend through that so that actually does come up all the time you need to play that for link twos double splash mage one code talker one inverted one Security Dragon, and one Update Jammer. This is fairly standard. I think all these kind of make a ton of sense here. I like Double Splash Mage for the grind. If our opponent does wipe our field, it means we only need to make a Splash Mage instead of a instead of a um, uh, Code Talker or Trans Code Talker. So, you know, it means we only need one Link Material less to, um, to be able to be a play again. Code Talker and Inverted, those are there so that you can make your mini coders live. Security Dragon, really nice removal. Because this deck doesn't spam as much, it's kind of hard to get into something like a co-linked firewall. Um, and so I like having access to an easy to make link two that's gonna get us some kind of removal much earlier than having to like play all the way through stuff. So not only that, but our deck has multiple destruction removal cards, not as much um, like non-destruction removal. So having a bounce is really nice. And then Update Jammer, because this is a slower deck, I know in the regular Code Talkers, you can amass lethal without even like going through uh, access code a lot of the time. Um, and so that's not as big a deal for them. But I think in this deck where you're playing a slower game, this just allows you to like, on a, on a, on a dime, just pivot and kill your opponent in like an instant. And they thought they were getting another turn because they were like, oh, what's he got? He's just got like two monsters on the field. Like, don't matter. Like, but as long as you can turn him into uh an access code with two attacks like that's just game most of the time for link threes double trans code one heat soul the boy the one and only and one s force justify shout out to mbt uh, i don't know if it was his idea or somebody in his community that gave me the idea when he did a 10 minute testing for this deck uh i saw he was playing this and i didn't understand it at first and then once you figure out what it's for you're like oh that's so sweet that's such a cool interaction so First off, the transcode. Same thing with Splash Mage. I like having two of this because sometimes you go through this, one of them, turn one, and I like having the second one for later on in the duel. 
Heat Soul is Heat Soul, and because we play the trans codes, you only need one. As long as your opponent doesn't like banish this, you only need the one. Um, because if it ends up in grave, you can just make trans code and revive it. They'll be co links, so they'll be big, and they'll be protected from targeting, and then you just get to draw on a bunch of cards. Uh, and so the reason Justify is played in here is because of Heat Soul. So if you don't know, Heat Soul doesn't just draw cards. He actually has a bonus effect to his effect where he says, uh, quick effect, you can pay a 1,000 life points to draw one card. Then if your life points are 2,000 or less, you can apply this effect. Banish this card from the field, and if you do, special summon one Link 3 or lower Cybers monster from your extra deck, except for Heat Soul. So I went through, and, and if you look at the entire pool of level Link 3 or lower Cybers monsters, there's only one that as soon as it hits the field by itself, it is immediately an interruption, and that is justified. This card is really cool. It's for that situation only. You literally cannot make this other than that. But man, when you make it that way, it feels so broken. Like this card will save your Heine every once in a while. And so I love playing it. There may be a handful of other Cybers cards you could mess around with and play instead. But I just, I love this. This is such a cool uh, idea, such a cool tech. And when you, when it comes up, it'll literally save you. It'll save you so hard. Uh, so I love it. And also we're playing stuff like the, um, uh, the Solemn Strikes as well. I don't know where those are. Uh, we're playing the Solemn Strikes as well, so th those pay your life points a little bit quicker, you know what I mean? Get yourself a little closer to 2,000 to make that live, and you're off. So, really, really cool. And the last two cards in the extra, Access Code and Firewall. Access Code, obviously basic, he just helps you kill your opponent. And the Firewall is really cool because if you open a heavier Cyber's hand, like either the two best starter cards, which would be like probably uh, Lady Debug and... Uh, your code generator, I think you can get to Firewall plus Heat Soul. Unless you need one more card in hand, I can't remember. Um, but there you go. I mean, you're drawing a bunch of cards off of Heat Soul. You'll, you can eventually end up with a, a co-link Firewall, so that's a quick effect bounce off of Firewall and the, the ability to extend further from hand. Really, really good. So I like it. It gives us like a higher ceiling play if you just open like a really heavy Cybers hand, which I think is cool because there is like, there's speculation that with a deck like this, if you open too many hand traps, but not a way to play, you can be in trouble or vice versa. If you open too many, um, too many Cybers cards, but not enough like defensive cards, your hand traps and your traps and whatnot, you could be in trouble as well. But I do think if you open enough uh, Cybers cards, uh, you probably end up with like a co-link firewall for the bounce, a cyanic conflict for the negation, and probably a, a draw two off of heat soul. So if you didn't open them, you've already pulled a lot of cyber cards out of your deck, and then you're going to draw two to try and find a hand trap or a trap or whatever to add to the board as well. So you can still end up with a good amount of interruption without oh, hard opening anything, um, which is sweet. So uh, yeah. I think that's pretty much it for the deck profile. Again, I think just the biggest thing to keep in mind is, one, we're going to get some power creep. We're going to get circular down the line. That card absolutely goes in every single cyber stack. I don't care what the deck does. Even if it's a control build like this, it literally gets you more link material than debug without your normal summon. So you play it. I don't care. You'll see when we get there um, what we're messing around with then. Um, but I cannot wait for circular. Circular is going to be so cool. Um, um, but yeah, other than that, just keep in mind, the biggest thing is make sure you're just being really smart with the utility cards you're putting in the deck. Like I said, 22 slots, that's a, a lot of room to just add pretty much anti-meta build your deck to just have all the utility cards that just are so anti-meta, whatever's good in the format. So I think that's really good. I think the deck can compete. I think you could definitely win a locals. I think you can top a regional. And I don't know about YCS. YCS might be a little too far for this variant, but I do think the combo variant, especially when Circular comes out, might be uh, the move. But we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff from me down the line. And uh, let me know your thoughts. Let me know what other stuff you might be playing, if there's any other cyber stuff I should be looking at for the control build, or if there's a different lineup of generic utility cards that you think I should be messing around with um to combat the meta let me know in the comment section down below i'd love hearing from you guys there and uh yeah i think that'll do it for me i'm out of here thanks for watching peace